Okay, let's go and talk about graphing polynomials. And when you're told to graph a polynomial, typically, like on a test or exam, you're really going to be uh, talking about creating a sketch of these things. So here's the polynomial we're going to be taking a look at in this particular video. Now, if you're like at the Algebra 2 level, college algebra, certainly the uh, pre-calculus level, you need to know how to graph things using your graphing calculator, something like a TI. 83, TI-84, there's other types of graphing calculators out there as well, but uh, you need to know how to use your uh, graphing calculator to actually graph different functions. So that's a kind of a different topic, but uh, if you want to go ahead and uh, look at the graph of this polynomial using a graphing calculator, that's perfectly fine just to kind of check your work. But what we're talking about here is creating a sketch of these things. And this is a very important topic. I guarantee you that if you're at one of these or if you're in one of these uh, respective math classes like Algebra 2, you're going to be um, uh, looking at test questions that basically say graph the polynomial. And of course, you won't have your calculator available. So we're going to get into exactly how you graph uh, various polynomial functions and some really important things you need to know about polynomials. Polynomials are a huge topic in algebra and you need to know a lot about them. But uh, anyways, I'm going to show you the uh, sketch, my sketch of this polynomial in a second, and then I'm going to walk through step by step some really important things you need to know about polynomial graphs and how to construct uh, the polynomial graph for this particular polynomial. But uh, anyways, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math, but uh, what you need is great math instruction. Okay, so whoever you're learning from, or whatever you're learning from, you got to be able to understand it because math is a very technical subject and oftentimes people do get confused. Now, the way I like to teach math is to explain things in easy to understand language so everybody and anyone can get this stuff without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, things like the GED, SAT, maybe the uh, maybe a particular teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. You absolutely must have a great pair of reference notes to study from. Now, you should be taking your own great notes. If you're not the greatest note taker, you need to improve that. Okay, that's really, really important. But in the meantime, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the sketch. And we're again, it's not a perfect graph. It's just a sketch of this particular polynomial. And we'll talk about how you can make it more detailed. But basically, this is what uh, you should have. If you did this correctly, you have some sort of uh, nice continuous flow, this little blue shape right here, this curve, right? This is our polynomial. And it goes through negative uh, 3, negative 1. And then our y-intercept, the location where it crosses the y-axis, would be at negative 6. And then it kind of comes back up and it crosses through positive 2 on the x-axis. All right, so if you um, have um, the basics of this graph, maybe you don't have the y-intercept, but you did have these three points. These three points right here would be the minimum kind of points uh, for a graph. You don't necessarily need the y-intercept, but that's so, uh, such an easy point to get. Uh, so this would be um, a pretty good graph. If you came out with this, let's go ahead and celebrate your success by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know how to graph a polynomial function without a calculator. Now, I'm going to talk about how you can make this graph more detailed, but again, we're not looking for a perfect um, drawing, you know. Uh, so if you use your graphing calculator, it's like, well, this doesn't look exactly like what my graphing calculator came up with. That's okay, okay? Just the basic sketch, and that's perfectly fine. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so... Here is our polynomial function. Now, this particular polynomial function, it's uh, written in an awesome way. It's all factored out. So what you don't want to do, okay, is what I'm doing right here. In other words, we have all the factors of this polynomial uh, function. You don't want to start multiplying this together. So in this particular 
um, uh, polynomial function. I'm, I'm going to start multiplying this back in so we can see the final version of it. Now, it's necessary to do this if you need to use your graphing calculator, but I'll talk about that in a second. But here you can see all this lovely multiplication going on. So I'll multiply these two binomials here. So there's the work. You get this trinomial. Then we're going to multiply this binomial times this trinomial. And when you do all this lovely work, here's all our um, uh, products here using polynomial multiplication. And here is our final polynomial function written in standard form. In other words, highest to lowest power. Now, if you don't know how to do any of this, if you're a little bit lost, well, uh, you know, this topic, again, I'm talking about, it's like an Algebra 2 topic. Should have learned on how to uh, multiply polynomials way back, even like in pre-algebra, definitely Algebra 1. So if you're a little bit rusty on this, and if you're at this level of math, actually in my Algebra 2 course, in my math help program, I do review a lot of the basics from Algebra 1. So if you need help with any of this stuff, check out that course. It'll really help you out. Okay, so here is our polynomial function. So we can either think of it in this uh, form, okay, all with all these uh, factors multiply back in, or we can think of it in this form. Anytime you're willing, uh, dealing with all the factors, this is definitely the best way to go. Okay, but basically these are equivalent. Now, what we want to be thinking about when we're graphing polynomials is the following. All right, see, here's some big picture concepts that you need to know. Now, before I even tell you about this, um, you've heard this word time and time again in algebra, polynomials, how to multiply polynomials, like quadratic equations. You're like, well, a quadratic equation, that's not a polynomial. Yes, it is a polynomial. It's a second degree polynomial. So a huge part of what you learn in pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, even into um, uh, pre-calculus has to deal with polynomials. Is there a lot going on, not only how you graph them, how you find, uh, solve the equations of various polynomials and all different sorts of properties, because polynomials are awesome. Okay, the main reason we love polynomials, even in more advanced math like calculus, is the first thing is their graphs are smooth and continuous. In other words, when you have a graph of a polynomial like here is a quadratic equation, uh, the graph of a quadratic equation is a parabola. It's smooth and continuous. There's no breaks in it. It's not like this and then like something like that, right? That's a whole different type of function. So polynomial functions are nice and smooth and continuous. All right, so that's the first thing that you want to kind of uh, understand that when you do graph these things, you're looking for a smooth and continuous graph. The second thing is that the graph is going to have no more than n minus 1 turns. So when we have an n-degree polynomial, uh, we can uh, figure out in advance, uh, we here, for example, this is a third-degree polynomial. It's the highest power, right, when we're written this, uh, when we write, excuse me, uh, our polynomial in standard form. So this is a third-degree polynomial, so n in this particular polynomial is 3, right? So um, we have this little kind of rule that this particular polynomial will have no more than n minus 1 turns. In this case, that's 3 minus 1, which, of course, is 2. So the graph is not going to do any more at max have 1 and 2 turns, okay? So you just know in advance that this thing is not going to do that. All right, it's not going to have more than uh, 2 turns. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to have 2 turns, but at max it will have 2 turns. Okay, so... Another thing here is behavior, okay, kind of our left and right behavior. Now, here, we need to take a look at the sign of the leading coefficient, all right? So here, the leading coefficient is 1, but we're more interested in the sign. It's positive. So we have a positive leading coefficient. It means that this thing is going to kind of continue. It's going to kind of go from be um, increasing, excuse me, on its far left behavior. Okay, so from the far left, it's going to be kind of be going up like so. All right, so these are some just general things we can quickly, uh, you know, understand by looking at this polynomial. Now, to really actually graph this, we got to keep these things in mind. We need to want to uh, get the x and y intercepts. We need some points, and that's kind of what I showed you in, uh, initially with my current sketch. Now. Once we get these points, okay, if we want to make a more accurate graph, you can always use a table, okay? Now, up here you're saying, well, uh, you know, I don't even know how to, you know, I got this graph, 
but I'm like, I didn't know how to, you know, I didn't know any of that stuff you're talking about. Here's the thing. Anytime in mathematics, you can always graph anything, okay, by just playing connect the dots. In other words, you can create a table of values and just plug in some random uh, X points that span across the X axis and then plug those various X points into the respective functions, get the uh, respective Y points. And here, these are... Um, all unique points that you could just kind of plot, you know, and you, you'll be able to kind of get a pretty good graph, right? A very detailed graph, and you could just kind of connect the dots, and you'll get a good sense of the shape. So never forget about using a table of values, and that is part of what you can do to make this graph more um, accurate, all right? But in the meantime, you have to understand these kind of like uh, core principles of graphs of polynomials. But let's go ahead and get into find the x and y intercepts. So to find the x intercepts, okay, this is basically solving this equation where we're gonna set this equal to zero. So when we're finding the x intercept, you set y equal to zero. So when y is equal to zero, we're gonna end up uh, solving this polynomial equation. Now x intercepts, there's all kind of like different synonymous names uh, that kind of go along with this. Those are also the real number solutions. We're also talking about finding zeros and roots. So if you've seen these words before, uh, find, it, uh, find the roots of the polynomial equation, the zeros are the real number solutions or solutions, because you can have real and or imaginary numbers. That's a whole completely uh, different topic about solving polynomial equations. But here, the x-intercepts very specifically are the real number roots, the locations uh, along the x-axis the graph is intercepting. So uh, to do that, again, when you're finding, you're trying to find the x-intercept, we need to set y is equal to zero and solve. And this is super easy because we already have the factors laid out here. So uh, we can use a zero product um, zero uh, product property and set each of the respective factors equal to zero and solve for x. So you can see the work right here. And again, if you're not understanding what I'm doing and you're watching this video, then it's one or two things. Either you're not, you know, studying this yet in your respective math course. Maybe you're in pre-algebra, you just want to check out this video. You'll get to this level, but if you're at the Algebra 2 level, you're not understanding what I'm doing here, then I would call this a math emergency, okay? You need to <laughs> work on, you know, how to solve basic polynomial equations, et cetera, et cetera. So again, make sure you take care of whatever you're not understanding in this particular video. All right, so these are the x-intercepts, which would be the real number solutions. Uh, to this particular equation. And remember, we're dealing with a third degree polynomial. Let's go back over here and tie with another really important concept uh, into this um, uh, video. So here we're dealing with a third degree polynomial. We're talking about polynomial graphs, but we should uh, talk about one other thing, and that is the fundamental theorem of algebra. It sounds so cool, right? The fundamental theorem of algebra. So remember, we're dealing with a third degree polynomial. The fundamental theorem of algebra basically states that the degree of the polynomial, in this case it's three, all right, so the degree, that's how many solutions that you will have, you must have, and it can be a combination of real and or imaginary, but here you can see we have a third degree polynomial and we have three real roots. All right, so uh, these are our uh, real number solutions. We're gonna plot all of this on a graph here in a second, but let's talk about how to find the y-intercept. All right, so how do we find the y-intercept? Well, remember, we found the x-intercept when y is equal to zero. So to find the y-intercept, the location where the graph crosses through the y-axis, uh, that's when x is equal to zero. So right here, all we have to do is literally just plug in a zero with these x's. So you can see my work right here. I mean, this is like super, super easy. So you should always get the y-intercept because it's like really easy to do. So we've got zero plus three, of course, is three. Zero minus two is negative two. Zero plus one is one. And when we do this lovely multiplication, we get negative six. So the y-intercept is negative six. That is an excellent critical point to have. All right, so let's go ahead and put this all together on our graph. So here is our graph. We know that our real number solutions were at negative three, negative one, and two. We know that we're gonna have a left-right behavior going like this. It's gonna be increasing from left to right. We have our y-intercept at negative six. So uh, basically what we need to do is draw a nice smooth and continuous sketch that starts from somewhere down here and goes up like so through these critical points. So our, 
our polynomial is going to go through negative 3. It's got to go through negative 1, right? So it's got to do a U-turn. There's one turn, and then it's going to do another turn. So it has a max of two turns. It's going to hit go through negative 6, and it's got to do a U-turn because it's got to go up through 2, okay? Now, actually, on your graphing calculator, this particular graph looks a little bit tighter, like something like this. So, you know, it's a good idea. Um, and as a matter of fact, I would call it... Uh, almost like a requirement that you need to uh, use your graphing calculator, you know, at these levels of mathematics, okay, Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, make sure you know how to use your graphing calculator and then compare, uh, you know, the graph uh, on your graphing calculator to what you got. Now, here, this is a general sketch. If I wanted to get, like, really, really precise and get more points, again, how do I do that? Just use a lovely table of values. So here I have negative 3, negative 2. Maybe I want to plug in negative 2 in that function. Maybe I want to plug in some other points over here. So you can definitely make your graph as precise as you want it. Okay, so graphing polynomials, absolutely critical core skill of algebra. You need to know it, and it's not that difficult. And you need to get yourself a nice, lovely graphing calculator, okay? Um, I am um, perfectly fine, you know, uh, with the TI-83. That's an old-school graphing calculator. It's probably been out oh, 20, maybe longer, 25 years. At least I have a couple old, old ones that work just perfectly fine. Also, I have nicer ones like TI-84s. So these things are expensive, and don't feel compelled to buy the, the you know, the most expensive gra graphic calculator. I would suggest these days, at least maybe go with the TI-84 because some um, uh, courses uh, do require, uh, you, you know, to have uh, like a TI-84 or above, especially if you get into um, some, uh, statistics, etc. So shop around and uh, make sure you don't leave this calculator around because these are expensive. So, you know, always kind of keep one eye on your calculator. I can't tell you how many times over the years people actually took other people's calculators uh, in the class. Can you imagine that? I mean, yes, that does really happen. So anyways, um, you definitely need to know how to use these things. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.